Okay, let's talk about the negative of a negative number, okay? This seems to be an area of confusion for a lot of students, especially when you're learning, um, you know, middle school math, high school math, and algebra. So a lot of you probably are going to think you know this, okay? You're like, no, no, I know this, Mr. Math Man. I got this, I got this. Well, if that's the case, go ahead and put your answer in uh, the comment section. Now, when you put your answer in, I want you to kind of stick around for another minute or two just to make sure that you have the right reasoning. Because if you look here, most of us, let's just kind of um, look at this. The answer is either going to be a negative 3 or a positive 3. But why? Okay. Well, it's interesting, right? So a lot of students are like, I know this, I know this. But, you know, me as a math teacher, I've graded, you know, 10 million papers. I still see a lot of students getting this wrong. Okay. So we want to make sure that no one out there is confused. So don't be confused. Stick around for a minute or two, and we're going to go through this and practice this as well. So we're going to get to this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you are having a difficult time with math, maybe you don't think you're good in math, I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Everyone can be uh, relatively successful in math. Some of you are going to become engineers and physicists, etc. I'm not saying you have to love math, but I'm saying if you're failing math, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, I've been teaching math for decades, and I really, really break things down in super clear and understandable components so everybody can be successful in math. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, you definitely want to check out my math help program. Now, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Acuplacer, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, you must definitely check out uh, my uh, math help program because I have great test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you absolutely must check out my um, homeschool math courses. Matter of fact, we just won a big national award. Really, really proud about that. We'll talk about that later in future videos. And if you don't have any uh, math notes, well, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. But if you expect to have excellent grades in math, okay, you must learn how to take excellent math notes. All right, this is a skill, and you got to practice this each time you're in math class. Okay, so let's get into this. So neg uh, negative of negative three. What is it? Is it a negative 3 or a positive 3? Put your answer into the comment section, and let's get going. Okay? All right, so let's talk about this. So first of all, let me just give you the answer. So we can just get that out of the way. The answer is positive 3. So if you got that right, I'm going to go ahead and give you a nice, happy face. Now, usually I've thrown a little mohawk and uh, or flat top haircut if you watch any of my other videos. But we'll just give you a happy face because this isn't the hardest problem. We'll save those... Uh, uh, fancy haircuts for more challenging problems, but the negative of a negative three is positive three. But let's understand why. And if you got this wrong, again, a lot of people do get this wrong. So the first thing you need to know is you need to know the rules for positive and negative numbers. Okay. So what is a positive times a negative? Okay. If I have a positive number times a negative number, what is the answer? Hopefully you know it's negative. Now if you didn't know that, then you're going to have some trouble with this. Okay. Let me go ahead and scoot down here for a second. Um, what is a negative times a negative? All right. Answer, please. All right. If you said positive, very good. Okay. Now, um, adding and subtracting uh, is another deal with positive and negative numbers. If you need help with positive and negative numbers, um, all the different operations, i got tons of videos on this on my YouTube channel. Of course, I teach this thoroughly in any one of my algebra courses as well. Now, this rule works uh, the same for division as well. So a positive divided by a negative or a negative divided by positive is negative. And then a negative divided by a negative, of course, is positive. Or a positive divided by a positive is positive. All right. So you got to know these rules. All right. So here we have to be able to interpret what's going on. So this really, this negative times uh, this negative three, there's two ways you can look at this. This is really like a negative one times a negative three okay so here we have a negative times a negative so negative times a negative is a positive so that's one way to think of this situation okay so for example if you have like four minus a minus three and it's kind of this situation is incorporated into a problem like this that's where students typically get confused they'll be like uh, is it negative three now 
uh, some of you who got this problem right, you're probably saying, gosh, I can't believe people get this wrong. Well, if you were a math teacher and you graded hundreds of thousands of papers, you know, I might be exaggerating a bit, but you get the idea. You see this mistake over and over again. You know, people do confuse this. So that's why I'm making this video. So this is one way you can think of it, that right here, this little negative sign is really like a negative one times a negative three. So you can be like, oh, okay, I know what a negative times a negative is a... A negative times a negative is a positive, so the answer is positive 3. So that's good logic, okay? Now, one thing that you want to be aware of as well is that a negative sign is also, uh, uh, you can also think of that as opposite, because that's what it means. So a negative sign, this is the opposite of a negative 3. So what's the opposite of a negative? Well, it's a uh, positive, okay? So this means opposite of a negative three. Well, the opposite of a negative three is positive three. Okay, so both ways to look at this problem are sound. Okay, whatever keeps you from getting, you know, not making an error, that's, you know, how you want to interpret that. But you still need to understand that this little negative sign does have that meaning of opposite. Okay, and you also need to understand that this is really a negative one right there as well. Okay, so uh, hopefully this is pretty easy stuff. And now let's go ahead and practice. I got three little practice prompts here for you. Take you all of about 20 seconds to do. So here it is, one, two, and three. Go ahead and pause the video and do this. Or maybe just watch you know, mentally. You don't even need to write these down. Let's go through this. This is going to be pretty obvious, obvious what the answers are. So what is the negative of negative five? If you said positive five, then wow, uh, you are a math genius. Okay, great job. That's it, right? So the opposite of a negative five is positive five or negative one times a negative five, positive five. All right, does this work with fractions, positive and negative fractions? It certainly does, or any number. It could be decimal. So what's the opposite of a negative one-half or negative of a negative one-half? Uh, it is positive one-half. So if you got that right, excellent. Now, this even works with variables, okay? What's the opposite of a negative x, okay, or a negative of a negative x? If you said x, well, then wow, okay, you're really on a roll today. In fact, it is a positive x. So... Again, you know, if you're having difficulty with positive and negative numbers, you need to break things down in, in their very simple components. Okay, all, uh, you know, you don't want to try to take on math. You know, here's all these different things you got to learn in math and whatnot. Like, I got to learn all of this and then just try to learn it all. That's not how you do that. There's that old adage if you have an elephant, you eat it one bite at a time. Then that's the only way to learn math. There's too many skills. So, like here, we're just taking on one little skill set. We'll get that down. Then we'll take on another. We'll take on another. And, and then, you know, you do this enough, you're going to fill in, you know, all this space. And now here, this is how you truly learn and master mathematics. It's the sum of all these little sub skill sets. But if you look at everything, you're like, I don't understand all of this. Well, that's kind of daunting. You're like, that's the scary picture. Okay, so that's not the way to approach math. What you want to do is figure out, hey, I know this. I don't know this, and then you start tackling these skills one at a time. So anyways, uh, hopefully this little video has cleared up any little confusion that you may have uh, had with the negative of a negative. Okay, so again, not that difficult, but uh, you'd be surprised how many uh, students make this mistake on tests and quizzes. And uh, if this little video helps you out, by the way, go ahead and uh, consider helping me out by smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. But my best math help will always be with my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.